guys so today I want to talk to you a little bit about caring for your corn snake I don't think you guys have seen this guy um, maybe very briefly one time but I don't show him very much because he's actually my stepson's and my stepson is with his mom for the summer so while he is there for the next couple months we will be taking care of his corn snake so I thought it'd be the perfect time to do a video about how you do that so my stepson is nine years old and he does a really good job of taking care of the snake. He takes it out every single day. Whenever he plays his video games, this snake is wrapped around him the entire time. He makes sure he has water and all that. But I do want to say that even if your child is super responsible, you shouldn't really leave reptiles with them unattended. unattended. So we constantly are keeping a check on this guy here and we're making sure that he does have fresh water we make sure that he is eating when he's supposed to be eating and all of that so I just wanted to preface this by saying that I don't in any way think that you should give your small children reptiles and just leave them alone with them to care for them by themselves <laughs> Corn snakes are super easy. They are one of the best beginner reptiles. I would even say that they are right up there, if not easier than ball pythons. They come in all different colors. His morph is an albino motley. And I'll probably just keep saying his and this guy's because he doesn't actually have a name. My stepson has changed the name so many times. I think the two most recent ones were Deadpool and Survivor. So his name is always changing. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> These guys have an amazing temperament. As you can already see, unlike ball pythons, they do not stop moving. They are super easy to handle. They like to move around. This guy absolutely loves being taken out of, taken out of his tank. He will actually poke at the top of his screen lid if he hasn't been taken out that day because he likes to be taken out every single day. Which is actually interesting because these guys are what's called crepuscular which means that they are most active during the dawn and dust. But this guy is active all day and he sleeps all night and I think that's just because of him being handled all throughout the day and that's what he's gotten used to. So that is what he prefers to do. With proper care, these guys can live up to 20 years and sometimes even longer than that. And they get about four to five and a half foot long. They are originally from the Southeastern United States, which is where I live, except for we don't have ones this pretty in the wild. <laughs> and since they are such an amazing beginner pet, these guys are really easy to come by. You can basically find them everywhere at any pet store repticon anything these guys will be there usually though when they're sold in the store they're only about this big they're tiny 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 which we got him when he was a little bigger than that just because he was for my stepson so that way being a little bigger makes him easier to handle and less likely that he would lose him but we've had him for probably about a year and a half now so he's about two and a half years old I don't think he's fully grown the local pet store that we go to actually has one that's 19 years old and he is absolutely huge he is five and a half probably pushing six foot long but he is a very healthy snake so let's talk about habitats so like I said, a lot of times if you get these guys as babies, they are super, super tiny and they're so skinny and small. You can actually just keep them in a plastic shoe box to begin with on newspaper, paper towels if you want to, but keeping them in a small tank like that or even a 10 gallon tank, but you want to keep them in something small when they're small. That way they can easily find their hot spot and the cold spot and they'll feel more secure when they move around in their tank. When they get older, you're going to want to have them in a 20 gallon long at bare minimum. This guy is actually currently in a 20 gallon long, but we will be updating his tank soon. He'll probably be in a 40 gallon breeder, which is a good size for them as adults. And also he moves a lot all through the day he is out and about moving around so he needs something bigger and also he's had the same decorations in his tank since we got him so it's time for him to have a change <laughs> these guys are escape artists they can and will get out of their tank if they can so it is definitely recommended that you have um, a screen lid with some kind of locking device on top 
Ours actually came with locks pre-installed, but if they don't, you can get little locking clips that go on top that just kind of snap into the top. That's what we use for our ball pythons. But you just want to make sure that that lid is secure because if they can get out, they will. You definitely want to keep these guys in a tank alone. They don't need cage mates. They are happiest when they are by themselves. If one of the corn snakes is bigger than another corn snake and you try to put them together, the bigger one will eat the smaller one. So you definitely keep these guys by themselves. As far as the actual habitat, you are going to want to have multiple hides, just something that they could go into and curl up and feel safe and protected and secure. And you're also going to want to use loose bedding. Corn snakes really like to burrow. He spends most of his time underground in his aspen shavings. We use aspen for him just because when he burrows, it actually kind of holds its shape a little. You can also use cypress but you want to avoid anything like pine and cedar because there are a lot of fumes that come off of those and being in an enclosed area for such a long time with those fumes can cause respiratory issues and infections. So you wanna stay away from stuff like that and then you also wanna stay away from things like sand, calcium sand, because as with any reptile, calcium sand can definitely cause impaction and you don't want that in your snake. These guys also like to climb. We have a fish tank tree in his tank that he'll sit on top of. So if you can put any kind of like rock or wood or something in there for him to climb up on, they will very much appreciate that. Make sure that these guys have a shallow water dish. It's best if they can fit their bodies into it, but make sure it's shallow enough that they can get out of it. He regularly is at his water bowl drinking his water, especially if he's just eaten. So you want to make sure to keep clean water in that dish and treat it with Refti Safe to dechlorinate it and add some calcium and clean it out once a day as well. Since he is so active, there is always aspen shavings in his water. So we have to make sure to clean that out every single day, even though it'll usually get dirty within the next 20 minutes, but still make sure it's cleaned out every day. want to provide a good temperature gradient in the tank. These guys don't need an insane hot spot like some other reptiles. Their hot spot needs to stay at about 85 degrees. So to achieve that, you want to use a heat pad with a thermostat. You need to have a thermostat because heat pads get very hot very fast and they can catch on fire and overheat and hurt your snake and they can go very wrong. And plus you're only getting that heat pad up to 85 degrees. So you're gonna need to have a thermostat on there to regulate that temperature. What I do, because he spends so much time underground, I tempt the glass under that aspen bedding to make sure it stays at about 90. And then plus I put a hot spot on top of the aspen. So normally what he does is he goes into his hot spot and he burrows down until he's at a good temperature and that's where he stays. So that way the glass doesn't get too hot in case he accidentally goes all the way to the bottom. And it keeps the middle of the shavings at about 85 degrees. As for the ambient temperature, it's gonna wanna be room temperature. So you don't really have to do anything extra there. As for lighting, these guys do not need any kind of special lights. As long as they are in a room with a window so that they can differentiate between day and night, then they are good to go. Since they are crepuscular, there's not that much light in the dawn or dusk. So that means that they don't need any kind of UVB lights or anything like that. But make sure that if they are in a room with a window that you do not put them directly in front of the window because too much sunlight coming in can actually overheat their tanks and if they get too hot, it can actually kill them. The same with if you decide to put any kind of light on top of your tank, make sure that it's not a heat bulb or a high output house light because you don't want that tank to get too hot. You can also just put an LED strip light in their tank um, or just use like a fluorescent light bulb, something that doesn't put off heat. We don't have any lights on his tank for two reasons. Number one, like I said, he does sit in a room with a window. And number two, he is albino. So we don't wanna put any lights in there that are gonna hurt his eyes because albino reptiles' eyes are much more sensitive than normal reptiles and lights can definitely hurt their eyes. So we avoid any kind of lights on the tank and just have him in a room with a window instead. As far as humidity, these guys like really low humidity. It needs to stay between 30 and 50%. You don't wanna miss the tank because it will cause it to mold. And you just generally wanna keep that humidity really low. He has never had a problem with shedding. He has always shed in one full piece every single time. The eyes and everything are always attached and you can see the little mouth and everything. Just having the water bowl in there keeps his humidity high enough to allow him to shed fully every time. 
But if your corn snake is having issues with shedding, you can take a damp paper towel or some damp moss and put them in the hide, but only while he's about to shed. As soon as he's done shedding, you want to take that out and throw it away and keep nothing in there because you don't want his tank to mold because it'll cause respiratory problems. most snakes he is going to be fed mice and rats you're going to want to try your best to get them to eat frozen thawed rodents as opposed to live because the live can hurt them they will bite and scratch and they could seriously injure your snake but generally corn snakes aren't picky eaters this guy is but he is the only corn snake that i have heard of that is a finicky eater and will not eat sometimes you can do mice or rats he will only eat mice for a while, mice weren't filling, up, filling him up, and after one, he was having to eat a second one. So we tried to go to rats, and that lasted for about three feedings before he refused to eat rats anymore, and he would only eat mice. With the mice, it's going to be the same general rule as most other snakes, where you are going to look at the thickest part of their body, and the width of the mouse is going to want to be about the same. It can be a little bit bigger than the thickest part of their body, but you're going to want to keep it around that same size. So they always start on mice. Uh, baby corn snakes will eat newborn mice, and then the size will go up from there as they get bigger. If your corn snake is still hungry after one mouse, which is how he was, rats are actually a more filling meal for snakes than mice are. So a rat that is the same size as a mouse is actually more filling than that mouse would be. So definitely try rats if the mice aren't filling up your snake. Another thing too is he won't strike at the mouse. So we feed him with the tongs. If he does take the mouse that way, he'll just kind of slowly take it and pull it away. And if he doesn't, we just have to leave it in his tank overnight and he'll eat it whenever he feels like eating it. Normally, corn snakes are much better eaters than ball pythons, which is why a lot of people will say that corn snakes are a better starter pet than ball pythons because ball pythons can go on hunger strikes and corn snakes normally don't. So the way that we defrost our frozen rodents is by filling a bowl up with warm water and then putting the rodent into a plastic sandwich bag and putting that bag into the water and then um, whenever the water gets cold we just change it out and put more warm water in there and then that's kind of a faster way to thaw out the rats instead of them just sitting on the counter all day. But really whichever way works for you is the best way. So you're going to want to feed your baby corn snake every five to seven days or your adult corn snake every seven to ten days. We usually just offer it once a week. We've always offered it once a week and if he's going to eat he will take it. But these guys are super easy and they're super pretty and they have an amazing temperament. They love to be handled. I would definitely recommend to look into getting a corn snake as a starting snake if you are looking into getting your first snake or reptile. I think it's about enough information to get you started on your first corn snake. But remember, always do your own research, 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 research to make sure that you are providing the best possible home for your corn snake or any reptile that you have. I'm not an expert at all. This is just what we do for our corn snake and what has worked so far for us. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe. I put out new videos every Sunday and they are always about my pets and my animals. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye.